We live in a society that is unique in a number of ways, as you all know. But one of them is that we are like a bear coming out of hibernation. For the last 65 years, it has been an absolute taboo in the public and political life of this country to say something about socialism. You risk being considered a moron if you were lucky, and a subversive, traitor, evil spy if you were less lucky. You were terrible. Everything about you was terrible, and everything you stood for was tarred with the terrible brush that you allowed yourself to be either critical of capitalism or interested in socialism, and for most people, those were the same. It's America that t treated its people to a repression of socialists and communists that was stunning in its effectiveness and unrelenting for 60 years. Before the Cold War, during the Cold War, and perhaps most impressively, since the Cold War is over, it still hardly stops. It's extraordinary. Why do I mention this to you since you all know it? Because for a person to run for president after that 65 years and call himself a socialist, that's why people were so confident in predicting he'd go nowhere, that the candidacy would be some marginal, fringy event that wouldn't even be covered in the press. And you know what that means. It's like the press doesn't cover the Green Party candidates or the Socialist Party candidates from the older Socialist parties and so on. Uh, many of you don't even know when they're running in your own district. You encounter them for the first time when you go in to vote. Uh, if they aren't buried somewhere on the ballot where you can't find them, etc., etc. Uh, this is amazing what this fellow has done, and it's most amazing about what it tells you about the United States. And I, I don't want to overdo it, but then again, I don't want to underdo it. A taboo has been broken. The impossibility of a socialist standing up and saying, here, I'm a socialist, deal with it, is now real. That's what that Iowa vote, Iowa, uh, no disrespect here, but Iowa. In November, I, I went to Ames, Iowa and gave a talk in downtown Ames, Iowa. I say downtown because downtown, midtown, uptown, <laughs> it all looked the same. It's a, little, it's a little place. It's where the university is. I had a really good time. There's a very wonderful radio station there that carries our program. It's part of why I went there. But Iowa is not a center of boiling radical politics, in case you had thought it might be. <laughs> not even close. Half of the people who went to the Democratic caucuses voted for a socialist. But an even more powerful number, for those of you that didn't see it, because they broke it down. What was the vote between Clinton and Sanders of people in the ages 17 to 29 years of age? Ready? 84% of them voted for Sanders, 14% voted for Clinton. If I were a leader of the Democratic Party, I'd be shaking in my boots. That's the future. Those are the young people. They're the ones who aren't going to die in the next 20 years. They're going to be around. They're the new up and coming, the leaders, the, the, the people finding their jobs, building their families, and all the rest. 84 to 50. That's not close. That's overwhelming. What does that mean? Where does that mean the country is going? 84% of young people were not scared by the term socialism. Not even a little. It rolled right off their back. That's new in the United States. That's absolutely new. Something very big has been going on in this country since the Occupy Wall Street movement in the autumn of 2011 that has changed people's minds. Anyone who now thinks that Occupy wasn't an important event because it only lasted a few months is making a terrible mistake. The impact 